I've always wanted to like come to the Himalayas. I had this time in between school and university. I just thought, you know, why not? So I studied geography at university and I thought I'd come here and experience what I was learning about in the real. So I wanted to go to an area that is being changed by climate change and is an area that is shaping how different countries interact with each other. Each year, young people fundraise and train to travel to some of the most remote areas of the planet with organisations like the British Exploring Society, who are a youth development charity set up on the return of Captain Scott's Terra Nova expedition. In the summer of 2015, a party of 80 young explorers and leaders set out to explore Ladakh and the northern Indian Himalayas for five weeks with British exploring. Ladakh is a landscape of extremes. Nestled between the ranges of the Karakoram and Greater Himalaya, most of Ladakh is above 3,000 meters high and is known as a high-altitude desert. With temperatures soaring above 30 degrees Celsius in the summer and plummeting to minus 50 in winter, living here is by no means straightforward. Nevertheless, many resilient communities can be found, connected by high mountain passes. From yak herding to road maintenance, all the region's industries come together in the capital city of Leh. Here it can also be seen that the area is undergoing drastic changes, with increasing westernization, climate change and political tensions. The future certainly holds many challenges for Ladakh. So we started our journey in Leh, which is where we flew to from Delhi. Coming out of the uh, aeroplane, the altitude hit you straight away. It was pretty extreme. Walking 10 yards was all of a sudden a big deal. When we first went around Ley, it was just kind of crazy really, you know, cars just flying around everywhere. We had a sense of that life was a delicate balance. Buildings weren't complete. It was very much a desert. And then we worked our way along National Highway 1. And it was absolutely incredible to see the culture change as we left and moved through Ladakh. We came up into the Indus Valley. You're on the edge of a cliff and you're looking out and thinking that a car is going to try and pass us. We are literally off. And then following the Suru River and then all the way up to the Zanskar region, which is where we are at Pensila. We came off the road at Pensila and then we had the two days to essentially build camp, digging toilets, setting up group tents. By the time we were settled in that evening, pretty much with our tents, I was like, yes, this is it, uh, we've begun. With base camp set up, the team could now look ahead to the fieldwork and trekking objectives they had made for the coming weeks and begin to explore the remote landscape around base camp. The first scientific objective was to gather lake sediment cores from a series of lakes near camp. Through analysing these mud samples from the bottom of each lake, the team would be able to see what climatic conditions were acting on the area in the past. We've been uh, going to the deepest spot of a lake in a glacial landscape at 4,400 meters probably formed at some like late stage in ice age recession. There would have been a large, enormous block of remnant ice here. And then once the lake was created, it's just been slowly accumulating layers of very fine silt from the environment, the atmosphere. This is a gravity corer. We're going to use it to collect a core sample of the mud from the lake. It works by um, this plunger comes up and then once you lower it into the lake, the plunger snaps back down and the pressure traps the mud theoretically, although we're expecting to have to catch it a bit. We're, we're collecting it in two centimetre uh, sections which can then go back to a lab to be analysed and we'll We'll relate those to atmospheric conditions at the time and other conditions of the landscape up here. Ladakh's atmospheric conditions have changed drastically, resulting in many severe storms and flooding events in recent years. The expedition felt the full force of this, and at times were confined to our tents until the conditions cleared. This made it all the better to get out again when teams left base camp to study another aspect of the landscape, the health of the region's water systems. This was done through looking at diatoms and isotopes in the water. Diatoms are a type of algae found in all water bodies. They are characterised by silica or glass shells, which are really beautiful patterns to look at under the microscope. They're useful because they're at the bottom of the food chain, which means that all of the other creatures in this ecosystem depend on them. To get to the water bodies to be studied, the team trekked down steep hillsides and into remote valley systems where glacial meltwater rivers flow. So we are 
are about to explore the valley behind us. Just over there to do some isotope sampling on snow, ice and water. It's been a pretty tough journey so far. We've scrambled down some pretty steep scree slopes. Everyone seems in good spirit and we're ready to move on. These Meltwater rivers have a colossal force and over thousands of years they've carved out the rugged landscape that we explored in the deck. is coming straight off the glacier, it's incredible isn't it? Incredible because it doesn't look like it's such a big glacier and you can still see loads of ice there but all of this meltwater is coming down so it must extend a huge distance into the valley. As well as sampling water in the river valleys, the team also hiked onto the glaciers themselves to conduct studies. Here, as ice melts, it flows across the surface of the glacier, eroding river systems into the ice. samples will be sent back to the UK or they will be added to the existing data set at the Natural History Museum in Wales. So a lot of flood and meltwater coming from snow and ice in the area during the summer months. This particularly affects many local nomadic farmers, agriculturalists, pastoralists and many villages in the area. Without the right amount of glacial melt per year this could mean that there is a very large decrease in farming. With the changing climate, many of these Himalayan rivers are going from being heavily loaded with the beltwater to being completely dry as glaciers disappear altogether and leave valleys without a source of water. So the impact of climate change on this area is really hard to pin down. It's local communities that are being affected in that their agriculture and their irrigation is being taken away from them. Uh, the, the supply of water is gradually decreasing as the glaciers melt. But at the same time, there's the complete opposite of that and there's intense precipitation events and you get flash floods as they saw in 2010 which this sort of area is just not set up for and it completely wipes out subsistence communities. As the expedition travelled through the deck, we passed through several settlements ranging from yak herders camps to cities like Leh. It was clear that climate change was not the only issue facing the locals. As Ladakh has recently received an influx in tourism, the area has been subjected to a high level of westernisation. Westernisation has been both good and bad. In many places, the main way they earn money is by selling things to tourists. The, the culture here is remote enough to be in many ways unchanged. It's still very friendly, very welcoming. But then it is quite strange to wander around and you'll see a child in a dress that's so clearly a Disney princess dress and it's sort of how did that end up here. There's this sort of westernisation coming in and being like look at us, look at how impressive we are um, and losing local culture. I mean I live in Birmingham, I'm eight miles from the Cadbury's factory and I come out thousands of miles away to this remote valley and I'm still eating Cadbury's chocolate which I've bought from a local shop. Actually we stayed in um, one mill house and inside they had a television on and I noticed one of the adverts actually had skin whitening cream um, which seems very odd because you think, well, why would anyone want to be white? I mean, on the plus side, you've got things that make life supposedly easier. But on the other hand, you have these sort of Western ideals that in reality aren't much and don't really exist. Over five weeks, our team explored the valleys and peaks of the remote Himalayan landscape. And in this time, we all learned a great deal from the DAC. There is no one who I think could come away from a, from a wild place, whether wherever it is in the world, but especially here, and not learn so much about yourself. I think the biggest thing I've learned from this expedition is probably how much travel opens your mind and uh, sort of levels people. It's just kind of sticking with other people, with your mates who you meet on this trip and kind of trying to get through it together and trying to make a joke out of it and just kind of embracing what can seem so different. I think that one of the most important things we need to communicate to the UK is just the impact on your average person throughout the world of climate change. So if you travel somewhere, bear in mind where you're visiting doesn't want to change. Ladakh is important, wild places are important because of what on an individual level you can learn from just being there.